bunch of familiar faces here. Yeah, just like okay. a, another regular grooming meeting. Exactly. I still like I still like what I you know what I said earlier. So if, if you know, I'm gonna probably drop, then I've got another conflict. But um, you know, that'd be the only thing I would add. You know, Ernesto. And again, you don't like it, so okay. Okay, okay. We'll see what no, happens. I mean, it is just my view. This is an open forum, so we, we may add different views and discuss that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be good. Yeah, in fact, I will add that one. Uh, so how do we call it? Uh, toolbox is the way that it's called yeah. in? Yeah, UI toolbox, you know, and, and, and again, the description would be just the ability to do low-level Ceph commands, never leaving the UI. I mean, it's like... Uh, I think that would be a very beneficial thing personally, but I mean, we can debate it with product management and others, I mean, as we move forward, so. And again, it's, you know, in, the, in that case, I think the developers would enjoy it as well, especially if it added value, you know, to make the, you know, it, it knew where all the nodes were that you had to connect to, knew the connectivity, it made it very easy, you know what I mean? You yeah. had links, yeah. you, know, you, had, you know, you had all the, you know, everything internalized and built into the, you know, the UI, so, there's no guessing about IP addresses, where you go, where, you know, how, how, you know, how, where the shell is that you have to go to. I mean, all that kind of crap. I mean, if we could simplify that and then basically have better error handling and, you know, of of those things as well. I mean, it, you know, it would be it would be awesome, you know. And then, and then that way they never leave. You know, like I said, once they leave, they never come back. You know, is is, is my take. And um, so, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, let's let's see. So if uh, yeah. we, we may start discussing that, I'm not sure if you want to add anything else about this topic or... No, that's it. I mean, I, that's my high level. You know, I'm not going to get much more detail. <laughs> okay. I've never, I've never even driven this FCLI, so... <laughs> okay. No, the, this case, I think, uh, and well, I think we, we may officially start that. This is going to be recorded and, and posted in, in the YouTube channel. So welcome, everyone, yeah. to the follow-up session for the uh, CDS uh, last week uh, dashboard team. So uh, we we're talking about this first uh, feature. Uh, Jeff was proposing it. Uh, it's basically embedding a CLI, uh, kind of CLI in the dashboard, uh, in the UI, so the users uh, can uh, basically call back to the this uh, UI CLI when they, they don't, uh, uh, they cannot perform some specific workflow from from the dashboard. So we will probably have to discuss this with other uh, core teams, probably with Redis teams, because. Uh, this might have an impact on, I mean, security impact. Right now, the manager technically has the same access as a kind of an admin uh, access. So I'm not sure if we have a fine-grained control here just to, you know, impersonate every customer, every user, because technically every user should act as a with their own permissions. So in this case, probably the OpenShift world and, and tech world are a bit different because the users are exactly matching the same, the same roles here. Uh, but well, I mean, something to discuss. I, I will keep that for a later discussion. Okay. Uh, well, let's go. Uh, I'm all, I'm not going to share uh, both uh, windows, the uh, backlog and the um, the Etherpad. I will paste the Etherpad URL in the chat of this meeting. It's also published in the uh, details of this meeting. So basically, uh, well, we may start with the uh, high-level topics, the bottom half, bottom half of that uh, etherpad. So basically, uh, we may start with the end-to-end -end workflows. Uh, probably the uh, top here will be the installation wizard. So we may start with this uh, cluster installation wizard. And also there's a huge list of usability improvements. So, well, I'm not sure if we can commit to uh, deliver a uh, uh, given amount of, of um, uh, fixes there, but I mean, we can work on that and, and provide a, at least an increment in that area so i will also list that one that's also a, actually a living uh, tracker because the, every day we are adding new uh, suggestions usability improvements
And the other big uh, topic that we had there uh, was the multi-site management. We already have uh, RBD mirroring, so the missing uh, bits uh, would be, uh, first of all, the RGW multi-site. I think that's been a much desired feature, so I will uh, add this uh, RGW multi-site. And also the CFS mirroring as well. So this would cover uh, both multi-site. And this might be more an exploratory uh, work. Basically, uh, check the ability for the dashboard to manage multiple set clusters. So technically, it might be feasible. Uh, the dashboard, at least the front end, is, is just a um, plug to a, a specific backend. So we may try just switching the backends and see how the dashboard reacts. So we may have this kind of exploratory work. I'm, I'm not prioritizing things, so well, we may discuss later. Uh, I don't think if uh, everything is prioritized in other uh, backgrounds that we at least are uh, listing things here. Multi-cluster support. And also but related I remember to that was yeah. not uh, a big priority. Uh, no. I mean, comparing with the RGBL or CFS. Yeah, once once we complete this, we may just uh, ah, okay, okay. reorder uh, things yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay. uh, I'm basically just well copying and pasting the big topics, the epics, or from the we had the RGW advanced features. Uh, I won't list it here. Well, I, I will just paste the list of things that we were talking about, basically. I think this is also something uh, required, especially, well, uh, the current uh, CLI is uh, kind of decoupled and you really need different CLI tools uh, for the RGW. Uh, mixing the Rados uh, CLI right with the S3, so having this unified in a in the front end, I think it, it will be very valuable. Uh, apart from that, on the monitoring area, well, we had uh, this idea of customizing uh, Grafana dashboards, and what what is most important is persisting them, right? Because right now. Uh, if you uh, perform any kind of modification in a Grafana dashboard, that will be, well, I think right now with CFADM that will be uh, removed or will be basically lost as soon as the container is restarted. But in any case, if, if uh, more than a single node is, uh, and a single Grafana instance is, is deployed, we will need to find a way to share the Grafana database. And that's something that we were talking recently, not uh, an easy one. Same kind of uh, level of customization, but in the alerts uh, area. And this is a, I think, interesting suggestion. It's been also a, a long-standing request, basically looking for uh, native widgets, removing Grafana, directly plugging the, the dashboard to the, uh, in this case, Prometheus. So, uh, that would simplify a bit the deployment and probably improve the user experience because right now there are some issues with the um, SSL and different well security uh, constraints that uh, using iframes is, is having on, on the front end. So that will probably improve. And also we have uh, high availability for monitoring. Monitoring stack right now it's uh, not fully high available, so uh, that's something that it might be easier to do right now with uh, the work on going on CFADM with the new ingress service. So we might be able to do this uh, sooner than later. And then we have on the epic of observability, we had the log aggregation. I saw today in the dev mail list, mailing list uh, someone asking for the Greylog support for uh, for Ceph. So I think 
there's still some interest on, on that on uh, having a centralized logs and being able to process and search to those logs from a centralized location. So I think it's, this is uh, worthy at least to be explored and we may just do a POC just for checking um, well, with a, an existing stack, uh, elastic or uh, whatever is, is being used right now. So what else do we have here? Um, there was a question from telemetry about uh, how to increase the level of reporting that there is uh, regarding dashboard, like for example, reporting uh, which areas were using uh, uh, from the UI from the dashboard and kind of tracking those. So I think it might be interesting to do such a thing. So uh, this could be a uh, telemetry dashboard analytics. Let's call it that way. Apart from that, uh, regarding the performance and scalability, uh, biggest uh, challenge that we have there, it's this is a shared concern uh, between the uh, dashboard and also the core, uh, rather the manager uh, component. So it's about the what one possibility is uh, what uh, what Ampere and exploring right now, which is basically bringing the cache into caching at Ceph. Uh, Manager API. And the other big area there, and this is only affecting the dashboard, is basically adding uh, support for pagination, filtering, sorting, and, and field selection in the UI. Right now, most of the tables uh, basically uh, fetch all the data from the backend and, or try do that and that might, uh, well, we, we surely know that this is not going to scale and it's not scaling under certain circumstances. So that's uh, probably another area of work. And then there is, uh, it's probably going to be uh, quicker than I expected. Uh, there is a big hotspot, which is called the Lean Dashboard. And these are more or less a, a series of, uh, well, uh, initiatives just to streamline the uh, development process. So part of the idea there uh, would be, for example, uh, generic UI components. And um, but I will just uh, paste the high-level uh, topic here. And there are some sub uh, trackers that we may individually address, but this would be more or less the high-level idea. So. And then another uh, initiative here in the Lean dashboard is having cross-component interfaces. So basically, for example, our main, uh, well, here in the dashboard world right now is FADM. So for example, just having a common interface there, but it might be also interesting to have this, such a thing with RGW components or with other components. So this uh, might mean just having um, shared uh, schemas or uh, classes. So we both, both uh, components share the same uh, definition and we don't need to re-implement and uh, ensure that these uh, same data structures are uh, in sync. So as, as we cons if we consume the same uh, definition, the same uh, specification, we could simplify and avoid some of the issues that we face from time to time. And there are other areas like um, we we talk about adding uh, Python runtime type checks. So this other one, we talk about the replacing the uh, Grafana JSON with generators. This could be Python, or it could be also JSONnet. So right now there are multiple alternatives there, but yeah, main uh, idea here is just to avoid the you know pain of uh, reviewing um, a thousand lines JSON file 
with a lot of boilerplate and defaults, etc. So we can concentrate on just previewing and perhaps adding even unit testing to Grafana dashboards. And what else do we have here? Uh, we talk about the backporting helper, but this is more of a general uh, topic. And if, if you are uh, reviewing also the uh, Quincy priority setter pattern, and I, I miss uh, anything, please feel free to step in and or directly add any anything there if I miss that one. Uh, so let's. The comments there are about the um, ah, using yeah this this was a POC that we we're talking about so it it would be uh, how we call this uh, one um, native dependencies right we call it native dependencies instead of I will refine this this uh, cards after the meeting so they are aligned with the uh, current syntax instead of uh, packet. And this would be a POC. The idea would, prior to propose this uh, for a wider uh, dev team, it would be just to start this POC on the dashboard side and see, I mean, how well this this uh, goes. And I think that's mostly it. Well, we also mentioned about the CFFX, uh, CFX uh, management, so the ability to check the uh, rings and manage the hearings, uh, permissions, etc. And the last one here is implement uh, the self-test for the dashboard. This is something, a feature that's already there in, in Ceph, but the dashboard currently doesn't implement any kind of self-test. So the idea would be to uh, provide this self-test built in, in in the dashboard. So an operator, after installing the dashboard, can run this self-test, for example, and they can uh, quickly receive feedback on the status of the, all the different components from the CLI and they don't really need to go uh, page after page checking that everything is okay or whether there is an exception in the RGW uh, page or whatever. So that's mostly it about the uh, bottom half of that etherpad and the top half is, uh, I think I filed most of these uh, trackers under uh, tracking trackers, like uh, most of the usability uh, suggestions and feedback, they are filed directly under the usability improvements or the workflows. So, yeah, I don't think I'm missing anything there. The only big thing, and I, I when I was, was watching the uh, CBS follow-up session from the Rust team, they talked about this, um, I call that uh, uh, US, m US, so, I think uh, this might be a nice improvement. It's just uh, displaying or, uh, well, configuring. Configure uh, US and clock from dashboard. This could be more or less as a follow up improvement uh, with what uh, I think it was Tatiana did for the um, recovery profiles. So I think there are new ways of configuring the internal schedulers and stuff and that might, and I, they, they were talking about this in the in the uh, core Brados uh, team. So this, this might be interesting to, to expose. I will paste the link to that inside. So, okay. And what else we have here um, from the orchestrator area? Yeah, that's also uh, filed within the workflows. Hopefully we will have everything there in sync. Um, there was a mention uh, to have a meeting, a joint meeting with the Rook team and the orchestrator team just for checking what is the current alignment and support uh, and well, the status of the, the integration uh, of the Rook orchestrator. So that will probably require a later discussion. And regarding the feedback from RGW, uh, that's mostly uh, 
uh, under the RTW Advanced Features uh, card. Uh, the, there was the suggestion to uh, display the URL to the RTW demo. That's also under usability improvements. And yeah. Okay, so that's mostly it. Um, yeah, there was this big topic. Probably this is not going to fit exactly the dashboard, but there was a suggestion to have a unified uh, RGW CLI. I will check in the RGW if there was, uh, they also filed this here later. But uh, in the meantime, I will add that. And specifically for the RVD mirroring, there are a couple of features uh, missing, which is the support for RVD mirroring, uh, a snapshot mirroring, uh, yeah, image mirroring, enable the image mirroring, mirroring. and namespace support, those three things. Okay, and uh, the last thing to provide feedback was CFS. Uh, we've got the CFS mirror, that's all, also included there. Uh, yeah, integration with the snapshot scheduler. CFS uh, scheduler. And display the sub volumes and volume support. And we also have the this request to expose the same metrics that I think in the case of the RBD, uh, the RBD stats and the RBD top, it was mostly driven by, by JSON himself. So the idea here would be to do more or less the same, but for the RB, uh, CFS top and the FS stat, stat top. So uh, for, for FS stats uh, metrics. Yeah, and the integration with the uh, NFS volume manager. So, integration with this. Yeah, and Patrick also mentioned about this CFS shell thing. I'm not very familiar with that, but we may explore that. And given that we were talking about uh, this toolbox uh, thing, this might also be something to expose in the toolbox. Okay, so I think that's all. Now it's time to uh, pre-order things. Um, so well, uh, what we may start doing is just uh, moving to the bottom of the column, the things that we consider less relevant. So Alfonso, you mentioned, yeah, the these ones, right? It was one of these, the multi-cluster support that we made. No, there is no way to move to. What this is going to be? So, and probably top uh, things are already there. Like the plastic installation with our usability improvements support for RGW. This probably would be more or less aligned with the RGW topic. This is something that we are already working on, so probably it would also be high prior.
I think Evan mentioned that he was willing to also push this. Uh, this this might also be related to the uh, caching one. And things that might be less prioritary could be uh, these ones that the integration I think it, this might be interesting Alfonso uh, based on your recent experience with the NFS right at least for Quincy to yeah. replace yeah what the, I don't know is, is, is what is more prioritary if uh, they are just the way features or this one I think both are more or less I think maybe object gateway is a little bit more prioritary from the feedback collected. But yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, this might be just a cleanup. The thing is that part of the issues that we are facing right now with uh, the NFS support probably might, you know, uh, get away with, with this, right? If, if we replace that, at least we uh, unify where the management of the NFS is. It's been done, and, yeah. and we we'll have to have this duality that we currently have with. Uh, and this. for example, this unified RDW, RDW CLI is tightly related to multi-site topper because w without this, there is no way to do RDW multi-site. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe Probably we can put that... them together, or or unify into one single card. I will check RDW uh, to see if they uh, state. I saw that you're here. Uh, yeah. Are you talking you about the, okay, the yeah. adding the RG, stuff, RGW commands to yeah. wrap Rados Gateway Admin? That's what you're talking about there? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Having everything in the SFCLI. Yeah, I think we should just move that up. Um, okay. And just as soon as we, if we try to do that soon, then that'll unblock. Next okay, piece. okay, okay. So I, yeah, I will put that uh, above the. Uh, and and just to be clear, I, I think the sort of the conservative first step there is to just pull in the um, the parts related to realm management. Um, not the entire, the Redis gateway we have in CLI is huge, um, but just the pieces that we need for all the realm and zone configuration. I think that's, is that the part which, that you need or is there or is there more which, that you need? Which ones you mean, sorry, this one? When you say unified RGW CLI, I'm just wondering which. Ah, uh, yeah. Which, you know, which, and maybe yeah. you can just describe in a ticket, like which, um, which okay. parts of the, which the so we can focus on just those pieces initially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was thinking just on doing this uh, offline, just uh, refining a bit the, the yeah. uh, every ticket, so we can keep this uh, short. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, but the idea would be just at least to expose the commands that we currently need for the configuration of realms, etc. So trying to do all the things that currently go in the Rados uh, admin CLI in in yeah. this in this tool, so we can send commands to the monitor and. Yep, okay. Perfect. So what else we have here? Um, I wonder if this FFS snapshot card should go next to the mirroring one, since it's probably the UI for this is probably going to be similar. Okay, yeah, the one, this one, right? The scheduler one. Yeah. Okay, we'll move that then. Go uh, Okay, and you were talking about this, right? Uh, I, I, I was watching the Rados meeting, so you were talking about exposing this from the from the dashboard. So where where uh, would this should go in 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 the dashboard? I honestly I don't know. <laughs> okay. It's it's pretty new, so um, I would make sure that we have the like the conversation about how exactly we can simplify this, but um. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have any answers okay. yet. So this is managing uh, all the timers, so it's or specifically attached to. I mean, there are multiple parts of it. The simplest sort of phase of it is just um, controlling how we prioritize client work versus background work. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure if that should be a global set of switches or knobs, or whether it's something we want to control per pool or something like that. Possibly both. 
Um, but the second part of it is um, like client by client QoS. And I have I imagine that is something that would be pretty slick if it was integrated with like the top view or something like that, so that you can there's some unified view where you both sort of see what clients are currently using and also what your QoS metrics are at the same time. Um, okay. But that'll be that'll be a whole set of challenges because those aren't necessarily overlapping sets. Um, okay. And where is would, uh, where are these settings uh, configured? Is in the well, they don't, for the, settings, for the second part they don't exist yet. For the, okay. the client stuff, yeah. It would eventually it'll be like by RBD image would be one place. Um, I'm not sure where it'll go for SFS, and it doesn't really. The yeah, RGW is its own thing, so yeah, it, it needs a lot of <laughs> planning before we get that far. Okay. So this this would be together with the existing QoS uh, settings, in, for example, for RBD. The existing QoS settings are super complicated, so I'm, it might be that we simplify those. First, okay. Um, well, I don't know. I, yeah, Oops. I would just have a sort of a to do item to scope this out uh, yeah. in, in multiple phases, probably. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's that's probably good because the, 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 that's true. The current settings uh, they are, can also be defined at different levels, right? The uh, yeah. image, uh, I think, pool as well, so and global. Yeah, exactly. So that's probably too many. Yeah. Yep. Okay, 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 okay. And should this be a high prior for Quincy? So what is the status of this in? Um, I think it depends on how the QoS stuff progresses. So um, I would, I would, if I had to just choose something, I would say that the first phase of it, which is controlling just QoS for client versus background work, that should be okay. definitely in scope. Um, Although a little bit of scoping needs to be done to figure out exactly how detailed, um, how much control we actually want to give people there, but okay. but the but the client part is probably going to be pretty bleeding edge, um, even as we wrap up Quincy. So yeah, probably for this we, we will set up a, a sync meeting with with the Rados team just to yeah. No much about these internals. Yep. Okay. And what else we have here? Not sure, uh, Stage, if you were here when Jeff was talking about this uh, toolbox thing. Mm -mm. No, it's I, it's I basically read, exposing a CLI-like, uh, you know, interface in the UI. So if some specific workflow or operation is not available in the dashboard. I usually can't fall back uh, to, to that. I see. I just open yeah. up a little prompt, basically. Yeah, I'm a bit yeah. Yeah, worried about this because, well, having a terminal in the UI. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it wouldn't be a full terminal, probably, right? It would be a. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah it, it might be just, but, I mean, some placeholder for injecting monitor commands, but even though that's, well, uh, yeah. Thing is that we currently don't have fine-grained mapping between uh, Ceph dashboard users and uh, Ceph uh, key rings. Not sure if we should do something like that, link both things so we could map uh, permissions or something. Right now, I guess every user of the dashboard technically could escalate to a manager uh, key ring, right? So they could do as much as the manager can does in and doing in a in Ceph. So that's that might be risky. Yeah. Okay. But it could be pretty slick if you did all the like completion stuff. Kind of depends on how much time you want to invest it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's say these dots. And what else we have here? Um, just installation with her. Uh, yeah, this is something that we will need. Uh, Paul, Paul Kostner was uh, prepared uh, um, and also Duval prepared some, some kind of blueprints and mockups for, for this part. So we, I will paste the, the ones that that there just for this. So it will be just launched after the uh, Cephidian bootstrap. And from that, you would be able to add nodes and uh, properly la label nodes and what 
uh, also to the OSD configuration if uh, that hasn't been done. <coughs> I wonder if um, there should be a card for a path for OSD creation and management with Rook. Okay. The whole okay, okay, can okay. of worms with the orchestrator, but in the, yeah. in the cloud environment, you have dynamic provisioners that are dynamically creating EBS devices to create OSDs on, which is a completely different workflow from all the existing OSD drive group stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I left out everything related to Rook because uh, in the meeting, I remember that we talked about having a follow-up meeting with the Rook team. Yeah. So, but yeah, if we already identify this one, we, we may just start it here. Okay. Yeah. okay, okay, okay. Probably, yes, the first thing is not here. So yeah, we, we should have this meeting just for reviewing the current support uh, from the Rook orchestrator. I will just put that what mid part of the backlog. What else we have here? Um, this one, adding caching, we were talking about that. This is something that we may start from dashboard, but the idea would be this caching in the manager API. To put that, not sure if in the Python side or if uh, it's not uh, well efficient enough, we may just move that to the C++ side, depending on... I got answer the I'll be right back. Sorry. Yeah. And yeah, and also we have to check uh, because one possible concern with this is the uh, possibility of having shared objects in Python and how the different modules would consume the same shared objects and that might, well, probably it's a bit unexplored territory. So the sub interpreters uh, thinks is uh, allowing you to do things that probably are not much tested in, in Python, so, okay. So that's mostly it. Regarding the customization, I would deprioritize this thing, to be honest. I'm not sure if uh, what you feel about this. But for example, the uh, customization of Grafana dashboard, this is something that might cause a headache in, at least from Cephadian, because we will have to look for a way to persist the Grafana uh, database in a shared storage or some way to sync this database across instances. And actually it's probably over customization from the user end, right? If we provide, you know, uh, sufficiently uh, customized the dashboards, and I think right now they are, because there are dashboards per, uh, uh, global dashboards for, per component and also per instance, like per RPD image. Uh, so probably if there are specific requests uh, for that. By the way, I, I'm digesting the um, same user survey, uh, at least the dashboard comments and feedback. So from that, I, I will try to also collect some well, ideas for, for this. And native widgets. This is something that we've been really looking for, but probably it will require a lot of work and not a high priority thing right now. So let's move that also in the nice to have area. Uh, about this one, I think we were talking about giving it more priority. So let's move that with the SNFS stuff. Uh, okay. I guess same for uh, customizations uh, of the alerts, so we probably may prioritize that as well. I'm currently not aware of uh, whether Alert Manager provides uh, an interface for customizing that, because in the past I think everything in the alerts were configured mainly from a, a YAML file or a, an init file, so it wasn't very dynamic if you want to modify anything there. I'm not sure if there's a way to, we might explore that. Um, the high availability of the monitoring stack, that's something that I guess with the latest changes in Cephalian, it might be uh, closer than we initially expected. So perhaps it's... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just, I don't know how important it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I think I would 
I would be inclined to move that one down. Um, okay. There's also the like the customizing Grafana dashboards. I don't know if that's something that people have been asking. Um, yeah, I, I did prioritize that one, on. I think, right? Or not yet. Not, not really high on my list. No, if it's here, I will do that then. Yeah. Um, I on think the other hand, is... like the Sublime support for CephFS seems like. Well, I don't know. Maybe that's a, on the edge. But like RBD mirroring, that one seems. Yeah. The RBD mirroring probably this this uh, one would be an easy one because the most of the mirroring uh, the the RBD mirroring is already there, so probably it would be just reusing code and, and yes. just that. In fact, I remember that the uh, pool mirroring was going to be deprecated, right? Yeah, sure. So we we may I, I think uh, Jason opened a, a tracker just. Uh, or the dashboard just too well. I'm not sure if deprecating or at least prioritizing the snapshot and the image based mirror. Okay, so we may give this more priority. Then let's move that to the uh, multi site, etc. So we you have more. And what else? Uh, the log aggregation, yeah. What's your thoughts about this one? I'm not sure what log aggregation means. Yeah, it could mean just basically gathering all the different logs from the different uh, de demos, I guess mostly from uh, OSD ones, and exposing that in a kind of elastic search or from the or kind of a centralized way. So. Not sure if we may also embed that uh, via iframes in the same way as we did for Grafana. I also provide uh, placeholder uh, logs uh, tab in the in the dashboard where you can quickly search across uh, logs uh, coming from all the demos in the cluster instead of relying on. I guess right now this is journal, right? Journal D. Um, so I'm not familiar with the way that uh, the journal D logs are gathered, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have a good sense of uh, how yeah how that should be scoped or. Yeah. Yeah, I think Sebastian recently mentioned that the um, uh, Podman uh, journal the integration was a bit faulty, right? It's it needs work. Yeah, yeah, the okay. Podman has issues and there's. There are patches to blog directly to journal D that are not merged yet. Okay, so we may uh, prioritize this a bit. Yeah, well, this is still a bit random, but later I will try to give it a second thought. And everyone is also invited to leave comments. And if you're interested in working on a specific card, Please join to the card and so another thing that we're talking about is the self test for the dashboard. Uh, this is not implemented right now, and I, I'm not very familiar with uh, what other modules do here. But I think from the dashboard perspective, it might be interesting to have this, especially like a post install step. So you install the dashboard, just run this, and ensure that all the different components have connectivity with their uh, counterparts and everything else. Working okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Uh, perfect. So, okay. So, if you don't see anything terribly misplaced, I think we may start with this. I will just refine the titles, add the proper dashboard uh, column, etc., and we'll add some extra info there. Mm -hmm. I think we're done then. Any other comments, feedback, anything missing? I mean, I think I think the only other thing is um, at some point I'd love to just like sit down in a meeting with you guys and just like a bunch of like nitpicks on just like naming and UI organization and whatever. 
um, that we, that we touched yeah. on some of the other stuff, but just do like a, a full pass through. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. You mean really na naming in the in the dashboard or? Yeah, just like what the, what the like the columns on the left are called and some of the layouts yeah. for some of the. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. There is a huge uh, a huge tracker issue. It's here. It's basically a meta tracker where we are finding everything that is kind of usability. So it's okay. more or less uh, well. There's a hierarchy with the different uh, components like host, uh, OSD, etc. But yeah, I I also I think I filed your suggestions, for example, recently about the file systems and diamonds and services. So well, cool. if you anything that you uh, I mean. Uh, miss there, you can simply uh, okay. track that in that one, and, and we are trying to implement this progressively. So it's not high prior, but progressively we are tackling these yeah. these items. Sounds good. Cool. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So any other things? Perfect. So thank you, uh, everyone. Um, have a nice day. See you soon. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.